Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's uh, let's pray. Uh, Father, we, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this um, new season. Lord, we thank you for this new semester. Um, God, for all these courses, Lord, I I pray that it will be a great, exciting, adventurous time of uh, equipping, Lord. And I pray, Lord, for each one of us here, Lord, even as we, um, Lord, even as we navigate this, um, Lord, semester, um, I pray, Father God, that um, that you will lead. I pray, Father God, that it will it will be a time of drawing near to your heart, Lord, over and above everything, Lord, that every every course, uh, every new thing, every revelation, Lord, everything, every new information, Lord, I pray will uh, um, that you will enable us by your Spirit to to draw us close to you, Father God. <clears throat> Lord, may uh, our equipping never be in isolation, God, but let it be always um, be a walk with you. Let it be an opportunity to, to just fellowship with your spirit. Let it be a time to just open our hearts and welcome you in. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you that you care so deeply about us. Well, thank you that you are <clears throat> mindful of us. Thank you that you rejoice over us. You sing over us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for all these, Lord, all these significant, but yet sometimes we just miss it, Lord. <clears throat> I pray that you're doing that even right now. That you're rejoicing over us, <clears throat> that we are called by your name, the fact that we are washed by your blood. Lord, the fact that, Lord, that we have received justification and we stand, Lord, covered in your righteousness. We thank you that you are just singing over us your songs of victory, God, songs of redemption, songs of possibilities. Hallelujah. We bless your name. Songs of possibilities, God. You're just declaring over us. Lord, songs of victory you're declaring over us. Songs of, uh, Lord, consecration. Lord, you're just speaking. Songs of invitation, God, to your very heart, Lord. You're singing that over us, God. We thank you, Lord. And may, Lord, may our hearts, Lord, may our spirit be sharpened to hear that even today, God. Thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your plan. We thank you for your purpose. And I just pray that every day will be a new revelation of that God to our spirit <clears throat> we thank you we give you all the praise Lord and I just commit each and every person in this class into your mighty hands I pray that uh, Lord it will be a great season God we just declare that uh, your kingdom Lord over each and every person over each and every home over each and every family that they represent Lord your kingdom righteousness peace joy your rule and reign in their hearts and minds God yes father thank you Lord fill us with your spirit even now anoint us afresh we thank you in Jesus name we pray amen amen hey awesome Praise God. I'm so happy for you guys. Very, uh, very excited for all of us, um, you know, especially um, the, the, the things that we're going to be learning and uh, um, the things that you're going to be, um, you know, as we learn the things that are going to be opening up in the, in the spirit, man, right? Um, God is going to expand our spirit to receive. Um, it's not just going to be a time of learning, but it's going to be a time of empowering, I'm sure and uh, preparation to walk in the good works that he's already prepared for us so yeah all excited okay so uh we're going to be looking at uh, uh christian leadership uh this semester and i'm going to be teaching that and uh, we uh, we know that leadership is a vast um you know vast uh, it has a vast scope is a is a is a is a great subject but it's also a very um you know uh, the scope is very uh, broad. Um, so we're going to be kind of narrowing down uh, to look at a few things. So it's not going to be a very exhaustive thing. 
<clears throat> we're going to be looking at uh, a few things. Um, so basically, we have divided this course into three sections. Uh, the first section is leading through time. So we're going to be looking at some basic concepts of uh, leadership. Uh, well, by the way, the notes, notes are uploaded in the classwork section. So you could uh, follow, you could, um, you know, uh, uh, go, go through that, download that. So the first section would be leading through time. We're going to be looking at some basic leadership concepts. And uh, um, and then secondly, we're going to talk about winning with people, because we know that ministry leadership involves people. Um, and we're going to be working with people. Uh, we're not going to be working, um, you know, as, uh, as islands. So we're going to be working with people. So we're going to be looking at that. And um, uh, and the third one is about um, <clears throat> with teams, right? So it's a kind of an extension uh, overflow of that second section. So uh, working with teams, um, what are the dynamics which come into play when we, uh, when we, uh, you know, when we are part of teams, when we are leading teams, uh, and so on. So um, we're going to be looking at some practical things. Of course, there will be some uh, theoretical concepts as well, but we'll try and link it to you know some practical uh, scenarios. Uh, maybe even look at some case studies. We'll, we'll see, right, as we go. Now, um, when uh, assessments, we will have two quizzes, one at uh, maybe after a month, or maybe by end of February or so. And then uh, we'll have one quiz by um, the third week of April. So uh, just um, in a follow through track so that you don't miss any of these quizzes. Uh, of course, there will be ad adequate notice and it'll be posted on the stream and so on. So they it'll be very hard not to you know, um, uh, uh, see that, but uh, just make a note of it. Okay, so that'll be for the uh, assessment. Um, yeah, so uh, when we are you know, considering this subject, so like I said, you know, we're going to be looking at, uh, we're going to narrow down to these three things. So it's not going to be, uh, you know, uh, everything about leadership. And and uh, it's titled Christian Leadership because uh, definitely the Lord, uh, the Lord Jesus, and what we see in the scriptures um, has a lot to bear or bring to lean on when it comes to leadership. Because like any other subject, the world has a way of defining it. Society has a way of defining that particular idea or concept. Popular culture has a way of defining it. Um, I remember working for, uh, you know, in sales, and uh, I was uh, actually very shocked by the terms that the sales manager, my you know, the manager to whom I was reporting to, the kind of terms that he used um, to describe the, you know, um, how I should view the market and how I should view competition. You know, maybe I shared it with earlier. Uh, he said, you know, you need to kill competition. You know, and, uh, it just kind of hit me. Uh, I was kind of shocked, shaken. Right? You need to kill the competition, right? So uh, you know that uh, you know the marketplace um, has a way of defining, you know, all concepts, uh, defining principles. And it has its own principles, but we look at it through the lens of scripture, and uh, and and I, by the way, you know, I uh, I sincerely believe that um, what we see in scripture, it's not just for church, it's not just for ministry, but it's it's for life, right? It's for the work workplace, and uh, I think some of you can testify to that. Those of you who are you know, who are in that environment and, and putting to practice uh, biblical principles, right? You can testify to that. Uh, is it easy? No. Uh, but is it possible? Yes. Um, because of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, right? So, um, so we have many such uh, examples out there, people, testimonies, who are there um, in the courts of Nebuchadnezzar, so to speak, you know, just like Daniel's in the courts of Nebuchadnezzar, or like Joseph's uh, in the courts of the Pharaoh, um, but standing strong, um, facing the battles, and, uh, and you know, holding on to biblical principles, um, and also living them out each and every day. And uh, praise God. Right? Uh, so um, they are, by their life and uh, work, 
we see that they testify every day that it is possible um, to live out uh, a life and thrive uh, in the workplace, in the marketplace, right? So, so whatever we're learning as um, you know, leadership concepts, it's not just for, though we call it Christian leadership because that's, the, the ref, that's our reference point, um, it is for the workplace, is it, for the, it is for the marketplace. So in our class, you know, we might have people uh, who are probably, you know, some of you are into business. Maybe um, a lot of you are uh, maybe into ministry. Uh, some of you are maybe students. Um, some of you could be homemakers. Right? And uh, the way you approach this particular subject and what you take away, uh, like some of you might say, okay, this is not for me. It's it's something it's it's mandatory uh, for me to finish the course, but uh, maybe it, it has a very minimal application for my life. You know, maybe you might say, okay, I'm a, I'm a student right now in this season of life. You know, I, I don't think it kind of makes sense. Or you might say, I'm a homemaker. I'm, you know, uh, in what way does it, Christian? I'm never going to be, you know, leading a team. I'm never going to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, have a formal title. Uh, as a leader, you know, as a past, that's not my calling. So uh, how relevant is it to me, right? So you might have, uh, you might have that kind of a question going on in your mind, or uh, and others, of course, you know, if you are uh, already formally functioning as a leader, you know, with a title and and uh, you know, as a manager or, or some, you know, someone in an organization, and, and you might say, okay, this is relevant. But uh, I just want to say that um, uh, this whole thing of leadership, you know, just like how we looked at um, biblical preaching in the last semester, you know, uh, we saw that all of us are called to be uh, representatives and spokespersons for the Lord. Right? That that great commission is for all. Similarly, if you if you take that, you see that leadership you know when we go into it a little bit and and see the definition of it and see the you know outworking of it we see that all of us are have some role to play in being leaders now the scope of leadership might change might be different the the realm of leadership could be changed now it could could be different and and the way we actually um, you know, function as leaders could be very different, right? Um, for a for homemaker, the the way he or she, uh, you know, needs to be a leader could be different from the one who's carrying a formal title in an organization and being a leader, right? So it could be it could be different. But the fact is that leadership is for everyone. Right? Leadership is for everyone. Um, so we might have uh, different ideas about leadership and different, uh, you know, different image of who a leader is or what a leader should be. Right? So, um, so let's look at, uh, you know, scripture, even as we go through this course, um, uh, some of these practical principles, um, we will realize that for life, you know, this, this can be a very enriching Thing, the concepts that we learn about leadership, it can really help us, right? So, um, yeah, so let's just dive right in. Uh, let me just share the screen um, and uh, go through. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's what we looked at now. Um, so what is uh, what is leadership really? You know, when we say uh, someone is a leader, of course, the, the common thing is a leader is one who has followers. The leader is one who's leading people, uh, as the name suggests, leading people to a particular destination, leading people to a particular goal. Uh, all that is fine, but when we, when we look at uh, you know, uh, I just like this definition of uh, John C. Maxwell, who. Uh, who's written a lot of books on leadership, um, uh, a Christian uh, a Christian leader by himself. He's authored many books. He I think he's a he was pastoring a church at one point um, also. So um, he says leadership is influence. Okay, 
uh, it's an influence, which means that you're able to influence someone to maybe look up and you're able to, but because of that influence, you're able to point that person, uh, point that group or lead that group by precept and example uh, for a collective good, right? to a collective goal. And uh, so if you look at, uh, if you look at it from that, angle or perspective you see that leadership is for you okay, leadership is for you right uh, you are a leader you are an influencer okay. if you look at your life there are a lot of people who are connected to you right uh, first of all of course your immediate realm of family friends uh, they could be acquaintances they could be uh, people whom you relate to at a professional level or at a you know at a ministry uh, level, um, they could be others you know who are connected. Maybe you know practical day to day life. They could be the uh, the milkman, the newspaper delivery person, the grocery delivery person, um, the person whom you meet uh, in the market when you go buy your your fish or chicken or vegetables. A uh, lot of people who are, you know, connected uh, to your life. We we may we may not realize it. We may you know we may have realized it. But the fact is that you can be an influence. We can be an influence for good um, in that in that person's life. You know, it can be a lifelong thing. It can be for a period of time. It can be it can be just a one time thing, where sometimes we we meet that person. And uh, that's that opportunity window of opportunity, and we can be an influence for good in that person's life, right? So when we look at leadership from that angle, you know, from that perspective, you know, uh, we can define leadership this way. We can say that leadership is being an influence for good in people's lives. Okay. To being an influence for good in people's lives, to bring about change in that person, in one's thinking, in one's behavior, in order to help accomplish or reach uh, their, maybe their individual goal or a collective goal, okay? So it's about being an influence for good, which is, uh, which is amazing that we have an opportunity to be an influence for the betterment of somebody's life for the betterment of a group uh, to reach a collective goal together. Now, we're not getting into, you know, uh, uh, a formal title, a formal role, not yet. But even overall, if you see, you know, uh, leadership is this. If you look at it, leadership is this. Um, so, so you know, I just want to... Uh, propose to us and to declare over us that each of us, each of you is a leader in the realm that you are, right? In the environment that you are. And uh, maybe the role could be different. Maybe the responsibilities are different, but you are a leader. You are an influencer, right? And um, you might, some of you are, might have formal titles to to empower you to do that you know in a formal manner maybe it's a ministry church uh maybe it's a you know a fellowship or a, an organization a company that you're working for um but even otherwise you know you have an opportunity we have an opportunity to influence people for good okay so in that sense leadership is for all right in that sense leadership is for all if you look at our individual call Right? Maybe some of us are saying, I'm still trying to figure out what that call is. I'm still trying to discover what that call is. Absolutely okay. Right? Um, but scripture talks about how he has, the Lord has prepared good works for us um, that we should walk in it, right? that we should live it out. Uh, and um, I think this is in Ephesians. Let's look at that verse. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus so which means that uh, we are his workmanship uh, we are created in Christ Jesus that we are new creations we are in Christ 
for good works, okay, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So each of us have a unique call. If for each of us, God has prepared good works that we should walk in them. And each of us, <clears throat> excuse me, are his workmanship, right? And uh, I'm sure you've looked at it before, but that word there means poema, a work of art, unique, a work of art. Um, so the more we begin to <clears throat> align our thinking, the more we begin to look at ourselves that way, you know, our journey becomes even more joyful. Our journey becomes, you know, no matter what the difficulty, no matter what, um, you know, the kind of uh, testing times that we might uh, the season that we might go through, we, we realize that, hey, I am a work of God. And, and as a work of God, my God has prepared some good works, some really good works. And when, when we know that God has prepared these, um, we know that uh, you know, he has uniquely uh, shaped us for these good works. And he has actually prepared these beforehand that we should walk in them. So. Uh, the responsibility, the onus is on us to seek him, to discover these good works, and, and start being faithful in, in the things that you know, okay, here it is, here's this need, here is this good work, let me start doing it, let me use my abilities, skills, gifts that I'm discovering, and, uh, and, and I start to walk, walk in it, right? So, um, and even as we begin to walk in it, you know, as we fulfill that call, we begin to realize that we are, um, God has raised us up to be that influence in that, in that, in that place, to that group of people, to that individual, right? Um, and uh, let's not rule out, you know, children, uh, maybe you're an influencer for children. Maybe you're an influ influencer for teenagers. Maybe you're an influencer for you know, peers. Maybe you're an influencer for even elderly people. Right? Uh, you could be a young person, but you are. Oh, God calls you uniquely, and that's a good work that he's prepared for you to be an influencer for that age group. And you wonder, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a young person. You know how, but you are. You can relate to uh, maybe the struggles, maybe the challenges of uh, elderly folk, and maybe he's called you to be an influencer. You know, uh, and maybe you, you understand, you empathize, he's called you to be an influencer um, for that particular age group. So it could be a group of, <clears throat> You know, maybe demographically, you know, it could be a geographical location. It could be, uh, you know, it could be people group with certain, certain special, uh, maybe challenges, uh, maybe, you know, certain age groups, whatever it is, right? So uh, you, you just go before God and say, Lord, you know, this is what I'm called drawn to. You know, every time I, I see this, I'm drawn with compassion. Every time I see this, it frustrates me. I want to be make a change. Um, and uh, yeah, let's not rule out things that frustrate, things that challenge, you know, things that intimidate, you know, even those where you can bring a solution, where God can bring a solution through you, right? So, um, so all these, all these things, you know, which make up the call, of God for you uh, personally, um, you are called to be an influencer. Right? You are called to be an influencer. So, like we might be called like Moses to specific, uh, you know, with a with a big task, with a very uh, large task of, uh, you know, leading people, uh, leading churches. Uh, well, let's not rule that out. Also, you know, let's just not say okay. I, I in my corner, you in mine, but your corner could be a very big corner, right? You might be called to affect nations, and that's the you know that's the call. So um, so it could be a you know a call like that where you say where God says, okay, I'm raising you up to be a leader. I want you to lead, right? These people. So um, like that, or it could be in the body of Christ. You know, uh, very very um, interesting when we look at Romans chapter twelve. Verses five and eight. We saw this when we were, you know, when we were studying the Holy Spirit, uh, the gifts of the Spirit. So we see that uh, Romans twelve and verse five. Let me just read that out. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing, according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. 
okay if prophecy let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry let us use it in our ministry he who teaches in teaching he who exhorts in exhortation he who gives with liberality he who leads with diligence and he who shows mercy with cheerfulness so we see that as uh, as members of the body of christ um there is this leadership gift which the lord pours out with the holy spirit pours out uh, to the members in the body of Christ as well. So, you know, as we have given different functions uh, and as we serve the body of Christ in different capacities, well, if this is also uh, another uh, a, a gift that is given uh, and, uh, and, and that's the thing. So the Lord might use us in the body of Christ as a member to lead uh, in whatever way, right? In whatever function. Okay, so when we when we go back to the Great Commission, okay, we go back to the Great Commission, Matthew 28, uh, 18 to 20. Okay. Jesus came, spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Right? So we've, we've read this many times and we've studied this many times. So the Lord says, all authority has been given and therefore you go and make disciples right, of all the nations. Now, when we, when, we, when we look at the whole thing of making disciples, like it involves being a spokesperson. It involves living that message and it involves journeying with people like the whole aspect of discipleship is journeying with people and teaching them to observe right it's, that's the thing teaching them to observe it's it's a, it's a journey observe all things that i've commanded you so in the process of making disciples as disciples uh, we have that responsibility right and uh, it, it, it is applicable. It's a blanket statement for all of us. So uh, uh, a command for all of us from the Lord. So when we do that, we see that leadership is just inbuilt in that, right? To be a spokesperson, to teach, to baptize. Right? You see that leadership is, is inbuilt in that. That all of us, you know, are leaders in in different realms so i'm just you know, repeating that over and over again that as followers of the lord we see that you know we each one of us are leaders in in different aspects okay so that's something that um, just wanted to reiterate okay so because um sometimes uh when we look at that whole you know topic of leaders just like how we looked at you know biblical preaching we might we might, I'm just saying that we, we could tend to cancel ourselves out and say, I am um, not a leader because we have a specific image of a leader, uh, a, a specific personality trait even, right? Sometimes we might say, okay, leaders need to be, you know, uh, I was re you know, recently looking at, um, uh, as a me as a meme as a game as a forward for you know introverts and extroverts and and the meme said you know i think we should have uh, some forwards for people who are extroverts saying you know um how to be quiet and sit down and uh, and not make conversation and how to be reflective and so on you know meme for extroverts you know, normally we see uh, for introverts right um, or self help books for introverts and so on so um so the thing is like we might you know based on our personality type you know we say you know i'm a i'm a quiet person or i'm I do not interact with people. Um, you know, I I hardly speak. Maybe ten words during the day, or you know, twenty-four words during the, you know, the twenty-four hours that I have. So, you know, we whatever things that we might say, it is this is not my personality type. I'm not, you know, this personality type. So because we might have a 
image of a leader being uh, being very articulate or being being pushy and being uh, you know being you know, strong and, and so on well we we see none of that right we, if you look at the disciples you know people from well with different walks of life uh, different limitations and different uh, personality types right we see peter being very very impul impulsive uh, jumping into water, walking on water, uh, you know, he sees, hears those comments, he's filled with the spirit, he stands up and gives a sermon, gives the altar call. You know, we see him uh, as very, you know, strong, impulsive, uh, and so on. We see, read about Paul, Paul being, uh, you know, oh, some of those things, you know, he's not mincing words. Oh, you foolish Galatians. You know, with uh, standing up to Peter, with standing Peter and saying, Peter, you are wrong, right? A very fearless man. So we might have some stereotypes of leadership and uh, say, okay, that's not me. But let's not forget Barnabas, right? Barnabas who saw Saul and brought him with him and, you know, introduced him to the apostles, uh, connected him with people. Right. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget Andrew, who said, um, hey, we have this small lad. We have this uh, lad who's here, this boy who's here, and he's he's got his lunch. And uh, that's all we have. He brought that lunch to the Lord Jesus. Uh, we don't read about Andrew, you know, uh, talking about things, and, you know, uh, concepts and, you know, describing things. But we see that. He, this is what he did, and uh, we know what happened after that. The Lord took it, prayed, multiplied. It's recorded for us in Scripture, right? So don't cancel yourself out based on your, you know, you, what you see as a personality trait. Right? God can, God can use you in in whatever realm as a leader. The other thing is, don't cancel yourself out on because of where you are in life right now, like the season of life that you are in, or, uh, you know, based on what you see yourself as today. Okay. Don't forget that the Lord is working in your life. The Lord is working in my life. And we are journeying on. You know, this is not the final destination. The Lord is shaping us. The Lord is transforming us. And Second Corinthians talks about how we are being changed, right? As we take a glimpse of his glory, we are being changed. Um, and we are being transformed into that same image, just Christ himself. Right? We are being changed. We are being transformed. We are being built up. Right? So don't forget that, that you are. You, you and I are works in progress. So the Lord is working in our lives. The Lord is changing us. The Lord is equipping us um, for the call that he has for us or the, for the call that we are already, you know, uh, pursuing in our lives, right? Uh, maybe as pastors, maybe as, um, you know, business leaders, maybe as working professionals, maybe as mothers, uh, maybe as grandmothers, whatever. Uh, whatever we are doing, the Lord is changing us, strengthening us. And, uh, you know, even as we look at inner wholeness, the Lord, you know, the whole topic of inner wholeness, you'll see that the Lord uh, um, is well able to heal, to liberate us, uh, to you know, release us now into the freedom that he has for us. So we are works in progress. So don't um, come to those conclusions based on, where you are right now, where you are today, this morning, right? There's there's a lot of distance to go, and the Lord is not giving up, and the Lord wants to, you know, do uh, wonderful things, wonderful, great things, in shaping you, in transforming you into the influencer, into the leader that He wants you to be, right? So, um, so that so that's something that we need to uh, understand. Okay, so now I want to ask you that question. You know, so how many of you think that you are leaders? 
Can I see your hands? Okay. I think I should take a screenshot. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. That's it. Remember, maybe some of you are traveling and your, your screen is far away from you. Maybe you're walking around somewhere. Okay. Right. Praise God. Right. So this is the thing that, uh, you know, it's a journey of discovery you, uh, and you, you realize that, uh, hey, you are an influencer, that we are called to influence people for good, for their betterment and uh, and primarily uh, thank you yeah and primarily to of course uh, share the gospel bring the gospel bring the good news and watch them you know uh, uh, blossom and thrive okay um let's just uh, we have about yeah, 10 more minutes till the break let's just go back to the uh, our notes and um, um pastor could i ask a question yeah sure sure go ahead sam let me um yeah so, um <laughs> um still not completely convinced pastor um mm. uh, if, okay. if my leader um and uh the reason being is um i think uh, for me i'm i'm uh, so i get the influencer part mm. uh, but the part that i'm unable to still process completely is around responsibility mm. so what i understand at least from my definition of who a leader is, is yes, an influencer, but um, I want to say that a leader has responsibility. Like for example, even in our definition, we were saying like one yeah. of the responsibilities could be to help a collective group of people or even an individual to meet their goal. Yeah. So that that uh, seems like an apt definition for a leader. So the responsibility is, you know, this, this person takes on the responsibility of helping, supporting someone to meet their goal. Uh, so if I'm an influencer, let's say, you know, as a friend, probably even as a father, you know, I may be an influencer and, you know, I have certain influence on people, um, but, you know, like, but I don't want to take the responsibility of helping this person meet their goal. I want to be a support and I want to, you know, provide advice whenever advice is solicited, uh, but really, I mean, I'm I'm more focused on um, because this is this is what I keep saying in the organization. They they keep trying to put me for a leadership position, and I say like I'm more of an individual contributor. Um, I can really set high standards for myself, and I can meet those standards, exceed expectations. Uh, but when you put someone under me uh, to be responsible for that person's res uh, performance, you know, to to be to help that person meet his or her goal um, is something that I've seen uh, some people are naturally gifted with. Uh, for me, it's it's more of a stressful environment when I'm made uh, responsible for someone else's performance. Uh, so in, 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 in the context of responsibility, in the context of helping other people meet their goals, um, if, if that that is who a leader is, uh, I'm still not sure if I can see myself. That I can see myself as a as a positive influence, um, as mm. a support, as someone who is always there to you know lend a shoulder, lend a helping hand, whatever is required, lend mm. anything. Uh, but to tell people like, no, you need to you know do this, you need to do that. They're like you know, uh, so just drive people mm. to be a driver. Now, and I've tried mm. playing around with words. Maybe I'm not leader. Maybe I'm a driver. But th that still hasn't worked so much. So, mm. so just your thoughts around yeah. Yeah. leader, yeah. leader yeah, and just... around the rep responsibility. You know, if, if you could just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, you know, uh, it comes with the responsibility, uh, and sometimes it's a, it's a formal role. And therefore, it's well defined. Uh, you know, these are your responsibilities: one, two, three, four, five. Okay, in, and these are the goals. Uh, uh, and it, it, you know, it's a vision of the organization. So, yeah, we'll get into the vision a bit a little later. So, um, you know, it's it's all well defined. It's clear, and uh, it cannot be devo devoid of responsibilities. And sometimes, you know, these informal roles of leadership, uh, where uh, that also, you know, it comes with responsibility. Now, you said 
you know, uh, responsibilities both ways. Uh, I just wanted to say that, you know, we have a responsibility uh, to maybe uh, guide, set standards, um, set uh, goals, um, you know, in the organization, maybe it's a formal thing. Um, and, uh, you know, we are ultimately, you know, we, we are accountable. So, you know, uh, we are also responsible to maybe uh, skill that person um, and see where the needs are, maybe in terms of bring alignment in terms of attitude. And, and it's a, you know, it's a process, right? Um, and it also goes back to recruitment and everything, right? Whether the person is suited, attitude-wise, temperamentally, skill-wise, etc. And then, you know, we have that responsibility of uh, leading that person. So that is, you know, one way, one side. The other responsibility is from the team also. Now, in a formal thing, it is, of course, you know, it is expected um, why that person is there, you know, why that person receives a paycheck uh, at the end of the at the end of the end of the day, end of the month. Um, so that is also set, defined. So the responsibility is also from the one uh, who whom you know you are leading, right? Um, so I just wanted to make that comment that it's it's not just from the leader, just pulling, leading directing but it's also you know both ways so, and in a formal setting it is set right uh, the expectation is set um uh, the second thing is well is it stressful of course it is <laughs> uh, it cannot be devoid of stress um it is it involves a certain amount of stress you just look at moses moses is like god just kill me god. <laughs> just take my life you know these people are too much they are you know mumbling complaining you know, grumbling all the time. Uh, it it is um, it it goes with the territory. You know, it is stressful. So, um, so you might say, okay, maybe I'm not built for that stress. You know, uh, but maybe you are. You know, don't uh, disqualify based on uh, a couple of instances, right? A couple of uh, maybe um, uh, you know uh, experiences, right? So don't disqualify yourself like that. Maybe there are certain things, certain strengths that God wants to build in you as well. And that can come when we actually face those times, face those circumstances, face those situations, right? And uh, and uh, and maybe God has put some strength in you and you'll be surprised when you face those, those times that the strength actually comes out, you know, when you're pushing against those things. That, so, so those are a couple of things that I want to do. Um, just mentioned Sam. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, uh, maybe just you need to take a, I mean, we can, I'm just a suggestion. We can take a kind of deeper look, you know, where is it that, you know, I, I'm not, you know, it could be a different realm, a different scope of leadership also. You know, some of us maybe are, you know, leaders in a different, you know, a different role, different aspect, different, um, you know, different task, maybe even. Right. Um, so maybe you can take a hard look at that and reflect and and see. Okay, is this something you know that is that I'm passionate about? You know the end result. So if I'm passionate about this big picture, then that can actually be contagious to the people who are, whom I'm also you know taking along with me um, to that big picture. Right. So that is also another thing to reflect upon and see, okay, am I really very passionate about this particular des destination? Uh, if so, then, you know, I can take others along with me as well. Um, and uh, that passionate passion can rub off, that passion can actually, um, you know, uh, even in correcting, even in resolving certain things uh, with the group, even in motivating, uh, it can actually come through. I don't know if that helped completely, Sam, but uh, just thought I should share those thoughts. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it's 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 a beginning. I'm very excited for this course, Pastor, and I think uh, there's a lot for me to learn. Mm. Uh, but yeah, this is this is an area where I've been. Um, I'm, I mean, it's it's an area of interest to me, um, and and uh, my I think uh, my own theories are also a little different. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, I'm I'm more uh, I think attracted towards the theory where uh, there are no leaders, but you know, each one is responsible for his or her own uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, role, responsibilities, and and we are all working in coordination. I don't like like a human body, human organs, all working. Mm. Are, I'm also think thinking. I'm I'm not sure, but I, is there a scripture that says you know look at the ants that have no leader, but yet they work in unison, some something ar- around that. But but things yeah. where you know, and I think it's got to do a little bit with. power authority and and i'm i'm excited that you know as i'm i'm sure in the course of time we will touch upon power and you know the power that comes with the leadership position mm. i mean a positional mm. leadership um and things like that so i'm excited mm. and i'm i'm excited for the conversation that we'll have but yes uh, it's it's helping definitely but thank you right it's a so um yeah some thoughts here from elisha Thank you, Elisha. Beth also shared some. And uh, can I? So, what is a leader according to kingdom standards? Okay. So, uh, well, um, well, I would say this is one who works with kingdom principles for kingdom goals, um, and who keeps the uh, the kingdom and the king, um, you know, right before him or her. Um, so. yeah according to kingdom standards and when we look at it we see that uh, um you know the lord jesus by his example and also um, by his life he brought in a very revolutionary uh, leadership style right that of a, a servant a leader right um so yeah we see that uh, so that you know that can be uh, uh, one of the things right the To, to be a leader with the kingdom standard too and the lord said that to be a servant leader and also you know we when we look into the scriptures we see that he said that i've come to serve so leadership to empower leader leadership to serve and uh, so when you look at it um, yeah that way you can say that that's a, a leader according to kingdom standards okay prabhaka is it correct for a leader to present the way that is best but not to take or force others to make that choice basically showing the way and waiting for them to make decisions well it depends uh, prabhaka like uh, you know when you're you know, as a leader when you're mentoring someone when it's uh, maybe let's say it's something to do with uh, uh, their personal lives you know maybe how they spend their time how they spend their leisure uh, you know even about uh, when it comes to their walk with the lord right so there are certain things that you can you can suggest you can show and say okay it's you make the choice um but there are certain things that you need to you know, be forceful and say you know you it depends again you know based on your relationship um you know how how is it with them to say that hey uh you cannot take that step right now uh, i see that it's going to destroy you you cannot take that step and god is you know place me in, in, in to protect you and uh, i'm not going to you know allow you to take that step it's going to it depends right and um, again uh, if it's a formal uh, it's a leadership position um, then then again there are certain expectations right to with the group that you are leading so you are empowered to make that choice and say okay guys uh, yes we are going to do this and you take the final call you know it depends on how that is defined and right? what your responsibilities are defined as and what your role is defined as so within that role there is also the um, you know the empowerment to take make certain decisions and then like for example you might have to say that uh, guys you know this next one week we have to work um 12 hours or 15 hours every day in order to you know in order to do this particular thing in order to for this particular release of a particular project to we we need to do this right so then uh, of course we you present the case and you get the consensus but that's something that you know you need to uh, that's a call that you need to take as a leader yeah so in that sense people yeah you know one way to look at it is you're forcing others but but really you're actually um uh you know you it's within your um your empower to make that choice make that decision uh, and it's it's not to abuse your role abuse your authority but it's in um, uh, in fulfillment of the collective goal you know as a team um but again there's a thin line right okay, okay we'll take a break it's uh, 
ten fifty three. We'll take a break and we'll come back at uh, eleven fifty three. Oh, sorry, eleven o three. Right? Okay. Thank you. <laughs>